So now the old man tells his daughter-in-law, he said, look, you go and stay at your father's house until the third fellow is grown. And when he's big enough, I will call you so he can perform his duty. But the old man, conveniently, he forgot. Conveniently, it suited him because he had lost two sons on account of this witch. This woman is a witch. You know, old people, this, this is a witch. He ate two of my sons, this woman here. <laughs> so he says, the third fellow might also go, same way. So conveniently he forgot, and the third fellow is grown up and he gets him married. And that woman is grating. So she says, I want to take revenge on this father-in-law of mine. So she gets the news that her father-in-law was going to Timnat, don't worry about the name, to share his sheep. So she says, right, I'll fix up the old man, the rascal. Yeah? So he, she goes and sits by the roadside, on the road, to Timnat, and the old man is game. He sees this woman sitting by the roadside, say, allow me to come in and to thee. Let me have sex with you. So she said, what will you give me? He said, I'll give you a goat kid. He said, what guarantees that I will give it? You have sex, you enjoy yourself, and you go away, and you might not send the goat kid. What guarantee is there? So what guarantee do you want? He said, your signet, your ring, and your bracelet, they used to wear bangles those days. And your bangle, and your star, Asa, of Musa alayhi salam. So the old man gave it to her, and he had sex with his daughter-in-law, and she became pregnant straight away. The two sons failed. This old man, one hit, Twins, twins, two, two at a time. And three months time, he gets the news that your daughter-in-law has played the harlot. She's a whore, she's a bitch. You know, she's carrying a baby by whoredom. She says, bring her, bring her, we'll burn her, the bitch. The old man can confront her with the servant. She sends these things. She says, please go and ask my father-in-law. I beg you to find out from me to whom these things belong. Because the guy who's this ring and this bracelet and the staff, he is the guy responsible for my condition. So please find out who can that person be. So the old man says, this is mine, man. <laughs> She's better than me. And the Bible says he had no more intercourse with her. Only one intercourse he had. Now, nine months have gone. And the nurse is waiting because they are twins. And the Jews are very jealous to find out which one came out first. Because if they are identical twins, and once they are both out, and if they get mixed up, you can be doing injustice. Because the firstborn, the first one who sees the light of day, gets all the inheritance. Not like in Islam, everybody gets equal. No, no, no. The first one gets everything. So now you can be doing injustice if they are identical twins. Which one came out first? So she's waiting, waiting. And the first one puts out his hand from his mother's womb. So quickly, quickly, she puts the scarlet thread, ties him up, and it's too sensitive, so the guy pulls it back inside. Then the other one comes out. So she calls his name Fares. Fares in Hebrew means the guy who breaks the queue, who pushes others aside. Because it was the other guy's turn. He had put his hand out first. I am first. But the other one now came out. So you, you broke the queue. So her name is Fares. Then came out his brother with the scarlet thread. So they call him Zara. Zara in Hebrew means red, because he had the scarlet. Thread. And these Fares and Zara are the great grandfathers of your God Jesus Christ. According to your Gospels of Matthew in the genealogy, these are the great grandfathers of your God Jesus. Children of incest are the great grandfathers of your God Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, And this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ the son of Abraham, the son of David, and Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren, and Judas begat Fares, and Zara of Tamar, father-in-law and daughter-in-law, produces two bastard children, they are the great-grandfathers of your God, Jesus. What's the moral of that? What's the moral of that? Huh? That's the most immoral thing, man. You know, your God, will you be happy? You tell him, you say, you know, your great-grandfather? In the genealogy as they have given us, according, there are six bastards and begetters of bastards of Jesus, his ancestors. Look, this is strong words. I say, look, this is so. There are six bastards and begetters of bastards in this book for Jesus, his ancestors. A man who had no ancestor, who had no genealogy, they give him 66 fathers and grandfathers, out of whom six are bastards and begetters of bastards. You think Jesus will be very happy? Huh? With this genealogy, he said, look, my God, my Lord, this is your ancestry. Huh? Six bastards and begetters of bastards. To a man who had no father. Now with that book, with that crap, they are getting converts, my sisters and my brothers. With this rubbish. 
they're getting converts. And you and I, we can't get converts with the Quran. You and I, we are not. Some of the converts we get is that our daughters are bringing them in. Wallah, in South Africa especially. It's not the Mulwis, and not the Molanas, not the Didats. Actually, our daughters are bringing them in. Father comes along, he says, now he says, uh, my daughter, she has run away with this guy here, and now somehow we persuaded him to accept Islam. <laughs> Please, you know, convert him, willy-nilly, have him converted. Nose is cut, not cut guy. My daughter ran away, carrying his baby. Now, with Mr. Moodley, Namka Musulman Banado, even by name, we can call him Mr. Muhammad Moodley, my son in law, Mr. Muhammad Moodley, or oh, Mr. Dawood Governor. You know, the nose is cut, now plastic surgery. Who's doing the conversions? Our daughters. And that's a fact, not men. Not the Tablighi Jamaat. The men are doing nothing. Is our daughters are doing the job. What a disgraceful, what a shameful thing to confess, to admit that is our daughters are doing the job. The men are emasculated, castrated. The men are ca castrated. You do nothing. It's your daughters are doing the job. With this rubbish, with that crap, that guy is getting converts. In Pakistan, he says it's perverted more Pakistanis into Christianity since independence than in the previous hundred years of British rule. They have perverted, converted more Bangladeshis into Christianity since independence than in the previous hundred years of British rule. Indonesia, they say 25% of Indonesia is already converted to Christianity. And by the turn of the century, they want to make Indonesia a Christian nation. And there are every signs they'll succeed. At the beginning of the century, Africa was 3% Christian. Today, there are 40% Christians in Africa. 40! from 3 to 40. And by the turn of this century, they're going to make Africa a Christian continent. And there are every signs they'll succeed. Reason. How is it that you're not getting converts? And that other guy's getting converts? What's the reason? Come, come, my children. Tell me. What's the reason? Hmm? We are not armed. No? You're not opening your mouth. You've got to talk. Any bloody rubbish you can sell. If you keep a hamari beer, bahut mithe, you know that boar, very sweet, very, a bloody sourest thing, but you say bahut mithe, some fool will buy. Hmm? You keep on saying, you know, guys caught me with leeches this season. <laughs> I said, it's very green. It was towards the tail end of the season. He said, but sir, it was growing under shade. <laughs> so I said, taste it, taste it. It was not fasting a month. Said, taste it. I said, no, with that one, taste it, man, taste it. I said, it's OK, <laughs> give me two bunches. <laughs> I went to sour like anything. <laughs> the guy caught me. Taste it. You know that conviction? Taste it, man. Uncle, taste it free. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> How much? <laughs> this is it. You sell. The Christian is selling. He's knocking at your door. We, not in our neighbors, our fellow workers, we don't talk at all. We mind our own business. And the best of us will tell us, Hamara Tikana Nehe. We are not perfect. I'm asking, when will you be perfect? Look at, there's three there, out of four, they've got beards. And everybody's got a small goatee, like me. So I said, look at me, Maj, make it standard size, man. Huh? Why are you wearing this Nasara clothes? You know, wear a nice jubba. Be a real Islamic fellow. You had done so much, Mr. D, that, you know. So much. <laughs> busy, busy, busy. Walla. They're keeping us busy. In the masjid. Wars, wars, salami or no salami, war. Dua, to read loudly or silently, war. To lift up the hand or not, war. Keeping us busy when the Christian is stealing our children. You are busy with your beard and the moustache. He says, this moustache of yours, one fellow told me at one stage. I had the beard and moustache, I think I had shaven it. You see? So he asked, you have shaven your moustache? I said, yes. He said, you see, our Nabi said, you must trim your moustache. You know, you can't trim with a razor blade. You see, you must trim it. At least.